Welcome. My name is Professor Thomas. I uh, might look young, but I've been actually one of the senior professors in the department. Um, my sister, who graduated from here, works at L'Oreal. If you want the beauty products that I've been getting that helps this along. Um, I'm also the director for the Center for Quantitative Obesity Research on campus. Uh, we run a weight management clinic, so you sometimes we'll hear my name referred to in terms of that, probably more likely in terms of that. But I am a card-carrying mathematician who works out of the math department. Um, my office is in 205 around the corner. And my office hours are 11 to 2. I rarely do see students coming to the office just because there's a lot of uh, commuter students and it's much more convenient to work online. So you're in luck. I'm a technophile. I love any technology possible, except cell phones in the classroom. So if you have a cell phone out right now on your desk or anywhere around you, please put it away in your purse or in your bag. It shouldn't be out during class time. And if you're looking at your crotch and smiling, I kind of know that your cell phone's on your lap. <laughs> I hope. Our book is by Hungerford. I don't know what you get in the bookstore when you go there. I think you get a disc. Is that correct? It's an e-book. Everybody get it? So a disc? OK, so what you get is an access code. And so you get an e-book online. And you also have WebAssign. That's primarily what I use it for, is for the homework problems. Because everything that you get, I do all my uh, lectures with a board on PowerPoints. So you can see you have all track of everything we do. And I video everything that we do in class. And I put it up on YouTube. So they have a full record of what went on. And from my experience last semester, that's what students prefer to use rather than going through and flipping through the book. I mean, it doesn't hurt to go through the book. But um, you're welcome to it. But that's, I think, 100% of the students last semester prefer to just use the video. videos are set up by the date and by topic, so that when you're studying for an exam or a quiz and you don't get I don't know, trigonometry or circles, you can actually go to the module that we did in class that says circles. And it has everything in it. It has the student questions. Everything's recorded in it. It's great because it's enough rope to help yourself if you miss something in class, you're watching cartoons, watching someone across from you play with their cell phone on their lap. Whatever it is, you know, you can go watch it again. But it's also rope to hang yourself with because if you don't get to them in time, it's hard to watch 45 hours worth of videos the night before a test. So it's, um, it's been pluses, some pluses and minuses to it. So let me go through my policies. Calculator. How many of you in the past have been told don't use your calculator? This is the opposite in this class. I'm an evidence-based scientist, and I'm also an evidence-based educator. And the evidence that calculators harm your learning, it's not there. The opposite is there, actually. Students who use the calculator perform better on assessments, even when the calculator is taken away, feel more comfortable with mathematics, and outperform their peers. So in this class, I'm going to show you how to use your calculator effectively, so that um, you know, you're going to make the best grounds if your professor is working with you to use the calculator. So the minimum required, I mean, the minimum requirements of our department, I believe, is the TI-84 or 86, somewhere around there. Um, my students have got the TI-89. I, do, I don't discourage that at all. It's out there. I even bought the 89 for my kids. It's, it's awesome. It does algebra for you. And um, so if you haven't bought a calculator yet and you're in a science discipline, I would go get that one. You know, you, you spend, I think, how much does the regular TI-86 cost? This one costs like 120. 20 more dollars, you get something that can actually do algebra for you. You punch in the expression and tell it to simplify, and it does it for you. So um, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful object. Shop around and compare, but I, I think you should be. I, I went to Staples and I got it for 120. And that's the first time in my life I've got one of the TIs, but I, I got it because I saw people using it in class last semester. I thought it was fabulous. So we have um, exams, three exams in class. The dates are pre-scheduled. I'm hyper-organized, not because I'm really hyper-organized, but because I've got a lot going on, and I forget myself what's going on. So sometimes, um, I think this is the old one. Didn't save. I have to upgrade the, uh, update this. I already did it this today. I don't know where it, why it didn't stay, save. 
will update the dates for you online. So I have one pretty much every month. You're going to have one, I think the first one is going to be February 20th, somewhere around there. Then you'll have one right after spring break, uh, March 20th or so, and then you'll have a last one at the end of April. So th those three tests will be towards the end of each month. We have something called in-class assignments that we do in class. Um, they're group work. We're going to do one in here today um, so that you can explore some of the ideas, work in teams, and get to know each other too. So these things are usually fun. They, and they're, it's nice that I've taught the class last semester because some of the things that, you know, uh, my son was saying something about math classes. There's things that people just don't understand, but nobody asks. Well, in my classes, they ask. And one of the questions they asked last semester, it only dawned on me after some time that students had this question. So we're going to explore it today in an in-class assignment. Those in-class assignments are going to be every Monday. Um, today is obviously not a Monday, but we're going to start off with one. Um, quizzes, you're going to actually have every, they're going to be opposite. This is going to be every Wednesday. And quizzes are going to be every non-exam Monday, so right after the weekend. And the final exam, I'll, I'll get the time for that and update that. Your homework's going to come from WebAssign. Your WebAssign is not graded. It's not taken for a grade. Um, I might be the only professor doing that um, other than not doing it at all. Um, I like the fact that WebAssign tells you if something's right or wrong and that you can see the answer and that there's a little button that you can go to practice it and see all that information. If, but I don't like it as, as an assessment. I haven't found it useful for my classes. Um, I'm not suggesting that other professors are doing that wrong. It's just that it's not worked for me. So what the web assign will be assigned to you, if you don't want to do any of them, that's, again, I like let to make you make your own judgment of what you want to do. I recommend obviously doing them, and I will cover sample problems here in class so you get to see how to do them. And all the quizzes and exams will be based off the web assign and the in-class assignments. So you'll know I don't like surprises, so you'll never get surprised by what I, I throw out at you. So policies, cell phones, I already made my, I'm a cell phone junkie, by the way. I told you I like technology. I love my cell phone. My cell phone's in my office because if it was anywhere near me right now, I might start texting people while I'm teaching. I, I don't know what I would do. That's why mine's put away somewhere. So yours also has to be put away. I'm, I'm horrible in meetings. In fact, many students find out that I'll be texting you when I'm having a meeting. And they'll say, well, wait a minute, you told us not to, not to bring the cell phones to class, and we know you're in a meeting right now, and you're texting. And I'll just say something like, students are more important, or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm terrible with the cell phone. So I get, I get it. It's a distraction, and I get it. But in our class, I really like to have it kept in your purse or put away. Um, put away to the side so you don't have it. Not, not in your purse, but put away to the side. <laughs> Um, quizzes, you get two drops for quizzes, two drops for in-class assignments. That's how I handle any emergency, any, there's no makeups. I just can't handle makeups. There's too many students that I'd have to deal with. And I really don't like being placed in the, in the form of Judge Judy, where I have to figure out who's telling the truth or who's not. It's, it's better just to have a blanket, two flat drops for any emergency that you have. Exams are also comprehensive. So the second exam contains all the material from the first and the material from the second. The third exam contains everything. So by the time that you get to the final, our final is going to be the easiest final you take in this semester because you would have seen it again and again and again. That's how we learn. We don't learn things by seeing it once. We learn things by seeing them over again. Ever drive somewhere and then uh, realize you were not going to that destination? It was like the destination, you know, like I, I go to work to Montclair, I go 287, 80, and sometimes I go up 287 to go somewhere else, and the next thing I know I'm on 80 driving to work because I do it all the time. So that's how you learn. You just do things repetitively and you see it over and over and that's how you learn. There's a famous mathematician that says you don't learn math, you just get used to it. So that's how we're going to approach mathematics. We're going to get used to it. And what if you miss class? Well this is kind of an old outdated thing right out there. You have a video. There's a playlist on YouTube which is going to say pre-calculus spring 2015. You missed class, you can go see those videos and you know exactly what's covered. Late for class, if you arrive midway through a quiz, um, that quiz is going to count to your drop. If you arrive midway through the exam, I generally give you the exam but I make you cut off right at the time that everybody else cuts off. 
Um, I do that because it's just too much clutter to have all these staggered start times with some people showing up 10 minutes into it, some people 20 minutes into it, and some of them started on time, and then half the class is twiddling their thumbs while the other half is taking the quiz. So if you arrive late, it just counts as a draw. I'm going to show you how I grade today. It's probably a little unusual. I have a rubric on the side of every single one of the problems that you take. Um, this does a number of things. It really helps the students from the feedback I've heard before is they know where the points are being allocated. So I don't know if you've ever had a math test um, turn back to you where you got what you felt like was 90% of the problem right and you got a minus 20, right? And you were surprised by it. That's not going to happen here. Um, you're going to know exactly where the point allocation is. And a lot of times I tell you in advance, this is going to be the rubric on this problem. So you know what that's going to come from. That's awesome. because. The guidance is right there on the thing, and many students go and double check. They check that they got everything they're supposed to get. Um, the bad part is it really doesn't leave me for any flexibility. So if I know that you know it, I'm locked in by the rubric too. So the best idea is to go straight by the rubric, all of us, and it also minimizes bias. So I might like you a lot, and I get to your test, I really like you, and I might grade you easier, but that's not going to happen because I have a rubric. So I'm going to grade you the same as everybody else because I have this rubric. So it minimizes bias. And all professors, they don't want to be biased, but everybody has biases. So it really helps with my grading side to keep that bump bias to a minimum. Um, I grade straight off of the grading percentages that you might be used to. I, I never, ever had to curve. Um, I'm right on target with my students. I've never had like the whole class fail. Those weird things never happen to me. So <laughs> I'm right on the scale. And most students know where they stand as they're going along. I prefer to have grade discussions in private. I don't like to have them like before and after class while everybody's crowding around because I feel like that's a private discussion. Um, my office is just around the corner, so I'm willing to just meet you in my office so that it can be a private discussion. I also am big on answering emails. I know that students often complain that professors don't answer emails. I answer emails and I hit student emails first. So it's not all, they come first. Um, if you don't hear from me by the following day, I might have missed the email, it might not have appeared in my inbox, something might have happened, that's when you should shoot me another email and say, I sent you an email yesterday, did you get it? Because I do answer student emails. So you can expect at least a one day turnaround from emails. Um, some students, especially in math, um, the cure for any math ills is go get a tutor, sit with them one on one. Um, that really actually doesn't work well, it's a very inefficient way to learn mathematics. Um, and I, I'd love actually to meet students one on one. I just physically can't do it anymore. And it's inefficient. Um, how many of you commute to Montclair? So everybody here has donned the little 346 and Montclair State meet at one spot. I'm stuck in an hour's worth of traffic business, right? Um, I'm from Glendive, Montana originally, so we don't have traffic there. So I, I got uh, the novelty of traffic in New Jersey wore off really quickly, let me tell you. So it's inefficient, right? You have to come to this place, which seems like at the junction of everything. And I have to come to this place, and we both have to find a parking spot. And then we have to somehow crawl our way to Richardson Hall, where there's no windows. And you might have to go to the bathroom while you're here, God forbid. You know, it's awful. Why don't we just work at our own homes or wherever we are and log on to Skype or use our phones? This is a great use of t uh, phones. Take a picture of your work, send me a picture of your work. Say, you know, I've got this far, I just don't get it. WebAssign says, this is what they say, this is what I'm getting, why am I getting something different? Very effective, right as you're working, you, get a you usually get a reply almost instantly. So that's, to me, much more effective and a better use of time. I told you I'm a cell phone junkie. <laughs> My cell phone's full of pictures of student work. <laughs> One of my things that I realized is um, I, don't, I don't help students before a graded exam or a graded quiz. Um, I tend to become more and more reluctant and dig in my heels the closer we get to the event. So if you're texting me or emailing me at noon and the test is at 1, you probably are not going to get a reply. Uh, my feeling is procrastination, that's your doorstep. <laughs> you know, I, I totally get it. 
I write grants, I do all kinds of stuff, and sometimes I'm pulling things together at the last minute. When I'm doing that, it's a gamble. Sometimes things work out okay, sometimes they don't. It's my gamble. It's not on your doorstep. Your gamble is your gamble. If you wait that long, you're on your own. Until that time, though, I will help very diligently. So um, if you ask me a question a couple days in advance or don't get something, you'll find me very, very helpful. It's just that la last minute stuff, I don't think that it's really help. I'm not helping you, actually, right? It's not helpful. It's you're cramming, and I'm helping you along with your cram. So it's not really helping you learn. Um, I get this one a lot because the calculators are expensive. Um, I don't have a calculator. Um, you got to get a calculator. My sister was a biochemistry student here at Montclair. My brother was a, a CS student here at Montclair. Both of them use their calculators in their upper level classes. In fact, we still have, I think she has a TI-83. So we still have her TI-83 at home. I don't think it works anymore. Um, you need a calculator, so you might as well get one now and use it in the math class, and you'll get to you'll figure out how to use it effectively in here. Um, so don't wait. Some of the students last semester waited; um, they just waited and waited and waited. We, you, I assume you have the calculator when I'm asking questions. So I'm assuming that it'll take you five minutes to do this problem because you can just type something on your calculator and get it. Um, I also do a lot of numerical experimentation to get ideas. It's not like these formulas came from out of the blue. People experimented around and played around with their calculator. That's how they, or something, like they played around with numbers. That's how they put things together. And so you really absolutely need one of the graphing calculators. I know it's expensive. I'm hoping that you can find a better deal than what I did at that Staples. is the chain store, right? I went into the chain store and bought it. There's got to be cheaper places you can get it too, I'm sure, and it look around. Are there any questions? Um, do you have a quiz like every week? Mm -hmm. Okay, so next Monday you have a quiz. Next Monday you have a quiz. Yeah. <laughs> I got to keep, keep you on your toes, right? So the, the way I uh, look at it is I'm a full professor now. Um, I've been here since 2000. I've achieved just about every goal I've wanted to achieve. If I don't make the students do what they need to do, then I need to quit because that means I don't care. Uh, there's no other reason to make you do something right now. It's just to make you learn to succeed. So my track record of success is not how well you do in here, but how well you do after you get out of here. I want you to be able to walk out of here and people to go, that's one of Dr. T's students. That's how I, I classify myself now, quality. Um, and to get there, I need to make sure you, I hold your feet to the fire. But you, you'll find it fun. Last semester they said this is our favorite class, and I told them too, it's my favorite class. <laughs> it's not as bad as it, it seems. <laughs> it's not like I just say, okay, you have to do the quiz every Monday. You have a path to get there. You know, you'll know what's expected, and you might even have fun along the way. So yeah. How could you not have fun? <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah, uh, 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 remind me and I'll, I'll pop it up on the board for you. Okay. Okay, okay any other? She's not gonna ask questions for you guys the rest of the semester. So you're exhausted, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, my classes get noisy. Everybody starts asking questions after a while. Um, it was 40 percent. So 40 percent comes from tests, um, 30 percent comes from the final, and everything else is the quizzes and the in-class assignments. I couldn't find some of this online. I haven't done that. I used to post it online, but what's the post? Uh, I'll post this online after I clean it up. I usually find mistakes I made when I'm presenting it to you, so I like the chance to clean it up. Um, but I put it on Canvas, so you have a copy. Um, and you also have a video because you, you can go back to the video and look at it again. Wait, for the video, do I have like a username to actually like access it? It's YouTube. Just type it in the zip? Um, I'll send you the first link, but I think you can just Google search my name mm -hmm. and on YouTube and pre-calculus and you'll find it. And you guys, if anybody else from outside of our class critiques our class on YouTube, up in arms, man. <laughs> 
I started getting on, when are you gonna post something about this? Like, never, because you're not in my class. 